Yeah. Ha ha. I'm back, my niggas. Yeah, big turf. Uncle Dill. That's what we on. What's up, everybody? I want to welcome y'all to the live Mighty DJ Turf. You know what I'm saying? Rappers. Um, right now, I'm in the process and the production of Redemption song with Bob Marley on Serato Studio. I really love Serato Studio. I've been using it for quite some time now, since like the very beginning. And I'm appreciating and loving the way they uh, updated over the years and upgraded over the years. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of things I'm going to show y'all in the process of me making a lot of the records that I've made. And uh, produce for a lot of little different rappers and some of my artists as well. Uh, I, I really like the fact that this is a compact studio, so I can go anywhere I want to with it. I can it's portable. I can move it around. I can go to any studio and, cut and, and, and dip and drop and send the plugins and send the, the stems and all of that to each song that I make. Go to a powerful studio, other than man. But considering that. Serato Studio Studio allows you to mix and master and really do what you need to do to, to, to create a song. It's like really one of the best programs I've ever did music on. You know what I mean? And considering I got a uh, a Kai, well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, a Kai uh, MP, P, uh, what is it? Uh, MPD 226, and I have the presets to the reasons. Uh, uh, MPC Studio One. I have a lot of presets in the drum machine that I can use Cubase to make good music. Um, more importantly, I want to walk y'all through a house track that I'm working on because I made several using Serato Studio and I want to give y'all a tutorial on how I make my beats and music using this uh, program. So, y'all sit back, watch how I work. And maybe you too can be one of the greatest producers in the world. Okay, now, give a shout out to my cameraman Rome over here. So, as you can see right here, this is Serato Studio. So, I'll turn it to you so you can see a little bit more of it. You know what I mean? I'll turn it to you so you can see it directly. And, um, you know, right now, my horse is acting a fool, but we're going to get to it. It ain't no big deal. So, let me get the sound right real quick, and we in the mix. Okay, so, now, as you can see here, where it says intro. If anybody's using Serato Studio, um, you start basically with the intro track as far as what you're going to start off with. Either some drums or a sample or a keyboard place, a keyboard part, or have whatever instruments you're going to use to start your track off with. Me, a lot of times, I like to uh, start drums, or I might find a melody. I might make a melody and put the drums to it. Or I might find a tight sample and tighten it up and loop it out real good. So my process of looping is totally different than everybody's. I don't use the bottom part. I just know how to count it out and let the the um bar bars do what they do. So I might do something on four bar, you know, two bars, four bars, eight bars, and eight bars turn into sixteen and so forth. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna show y'all how I'm working on this record real quick because Bob Marley is like my idol. Other than Louis Farrakhan and Malcolm X, those are my idols. Other than my father. You know what I mean? But those are my idols who I look up to and I get inspiration from. And um, considering I just seen the Bob Marley movie, you know, and been following Bob my whole life, you know what I'm saying, as a DJ as well, because I play reggae, I play a lot of records, you know, I play a lot of music. So, but um, for me, making music is the best thing of it all. So I want to give a major, major shout out to Serato Studio for coming out with a program easy for DJs to make music. You know what I'm saying? Even, you know, from hip hop, it's got so many um, templates that you can use to make all types of music. So, to young producers coming up, you know, I know y'all like Fruity Loops and all that shit. That shit lame. That shit whack as hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fuck Fruity Loops and all that. I don't even fuck with that shit. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, because this is simplified to the to like like crazy. So, shout out to the stem set. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of records that I made over the years, I was using and doing Serato Studio even without a stem set or RX Audio Ripper and all that shit to get vocals. So, I knew how to mix and put the vocals in between a lot of records that I was making back then. But anyway, I'm going to start off showing you, you know, uh, the very beginning of this this track where I started. So I started with a Bob Marley sample, and it starts with the intro. the sample. Then after that, I take this 
I'm gonna draw one. I'm gonna start it this way. I'm gonna go to the next scene. Now, before I go into the next scene, for you people that, for the young people that don't know, or you beginners learning Serato Studio, when you get your first track, when you get your first scene done, and you want to build on top of that, you always go to the next space and click on it, and it will copy it. So that way you can continue building on your song. See, I only do, I only use one pattern. I'm not, every scene is a pattern. I don't change my pattern from pattern one to pattern two, pattern three. I don't use automations, none of that shit, none of that, because I'm still an engineer and I know how to get into the song the way I, I need it to sound and, 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 and uh, go crazy. So over here where you got plugins with your instruments, effects, patterns and stuff like that, audio samples and drums and stuff like that. I got an um, immense amount of plugins. Uh, I got a lot of plugins, a lot of keyboards, a lot of sound modules. And uh, they all, you know, like right in here. So I got uh, uh, Korgs, I got all the rolling drum machines. I got so many plugins to make music, it's ridiculous. I got over 100,000 drum sounds, you know what I mean? Like literally. And um, so, just to get you, bring you up to speed, this is how you do it. So, when you make your track, you copy the scene to build for it. So again, I'm going to start at the beginning of the, of, of, of the production because I done already started on it. And I just want to give everybody an explanation on how I really get out when I do my beats and do my music. So, I'm going to start at the intro. So we all know this is another thing a lot of y'all might not know how to set your uh, volume on your mixer always have your mixer set to 12 db you understand always have each channel set to 12 db so that way when you start mastering and mixing and cleaning your record up everything will be set now also when you go to your t-mix board you go to your t-mix board and you have scenes and everything that you have up here on your mixing board. Shout out to shout out to, to Serato Studio, man, because they put your team mix board together. So it's each track. You got each every track has its own everything has its own track where you can mix it and clean it and master it yourself through this through this board. Now, but also in order to get the great impact, I come on to the scenes because now you got the scene situation where all your scenes it, it, it modulates all the scenes. You control the volume with all your scenes over here. So you always keep your sound your scenes at 12 dB just like everything else. You set it at 12.0 dB or 12.1, where you still get a good, you know, better, a good value. So then you come down to your effects boxes. You know what I'm saying? They've, they've added six more effects. You, you, you got a lot of effects boxes where you can put different plugins and stuff, use different compressors. I got so many compressors. I got a lot of different compressors and stuff. So I don't have to really use the compressors that come with this Serato Studio, but I also use those as well. And I have a goo gob of mixers, and I got a lot of stuff to, you know, clean your music up and match your music. A lot of microphone um, boxes, you know, uh, different, different, a lot of different plugins. So anyway, what I do is I always come to the master and I click on the little the purple, click on the down button next to once you go down into your uh, 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 effects box and you scroll down and you look for your master and which I always turn it up louder so when I play the track at starting before I, a lot of times I don't clean them up as I, I clean them up after I, I, I do it so we're gonna go back you click on T-Mix and go back to your, your main screen where your sequences and all this stuff is at so again we're starting from the top again now here it is the Bob Marley and I'm gonna turn it up two times a little bit more
Now, when you get to certain parts of the song where you want to drop, a lot of times you can go into wherever you got the sample, whatever you want to drop it, pop it in and pop it out. You go up to your record button. You also find where your sample is or your whatever instrument you use. And when you say, when you click on that, you click on your uh, your lap on your speaker that the the, the your speaker, you know what I'm saying? That's next to the uh, S, which is solo deck. Then you got your mute deck. So when you go to your mute deck, you can click on record and hit your mute deck, and then the silence, and then you can hit your mute deck again to pop back in any any way you want to. So that's a great you know avenue that I like to use from time to time when I'm mixing down when I like really want to do a good mix of a track that I'm, I don't want to just erase. But in this case, I took out the um, guitar sample to let the drums rock. So this is on scene four. So, you you know, it's just my imagination. I don't know how everybody else do it, but this is kind of how like I want to do it where I don't have to mute certain stuff. I just take certain stuff out and then bring it back and, you know, from where I was, the, the, the original samples or whatever was going on. That I usually bring it back like that. So. I'm gonna say that's a mini chord, you know what I'm saying, playing with the um I got a um sound module of the um SRX world sound I used in that. You hear that and then you hear the Triton you start you hear the Triton Extreme keyboard in a second when I when I play the next, next couple of scenes. Um, so right now I'm up to seven scenes. This is going to be a big record when I get through because I haven't added the vocals. Now a lot of people like to take the song and put the song on, over here on your song view. Now when you go to your song view, you can add an audio track. Once you click the audio track, it'll, it'll allow you to drag and drop the, um, the whatever it is that you want to use to take the vocal use, you know, to make the song. What I normally do is I build the rip the vocals into the song. I don't never two track the song and then make the beat on top of the song to follow along. I don't. I really a very very occasionally will I do that. But a lot of times I like to build the song in the beat as if the artist is right here with me on the microphone. So what I do is I I I I, I kind of like it's like sampling all the lyrics and running them together. That's basically what I do a lot of times, you know what I'm saying? And then I can mix them and really clean them up the way they built in the song to be. Okay, so now we'll go back to the same four, which is without the guitar part, and then I'll run through it and let y'all hear it. And then I'll, as I'll be making it as I'm showing y'all how I get it done. Now on this same in the, on this particular scene, I added a sample of Redemption Song. I'm saying Redemption Song on top of the chord and the bass line that I use from the uh, SRX keyboard. Okay, so now it, you know it's, it's 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 wonderfully like choreographed to put how I put it together before I start getting ready to go into the vocals of the song, so I can have get the the melody and the rhythm all the way together. So we're gonna go back to same five. I'm gonna let you hear it again. <laughs> Okay, so now, by that being the first 16 bars of the song, I'm going to now copy the seventh scene and I'm going to erase it to add the second verse, 
the, 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 the next lines of that first verse of Bob singing. So basically what I do is I copy it, right? And I come over here to the sequencer of where the sample is of the Bob Marley, then you clear it. Then what I do is I go back here to my iTunes situation <laughs> and I move that over and I drag and drop it to add sample, right? Always turn the sink off. Never use the sink. Use your ears. You did. So once I do that, I set my preset. So now, now I go. Me knowing that I go to the top of the sample till I get to the lyrics. <laughs> then you go to the top of your 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 your, your, your stem set where you see a drum, a guitar, the keyboard, and a microphone. That's part of your stem set. So once you eradicate those, you, you, you click on them where you can take away the drums to add or whatever, or whatever, it, you know, sample you got going. I'm still recording? Yeah. Okay. Um, whatever, whatever you got going to get to whatever a part of a song that you want. See, me, I just typically use the vocals. I don't really care about the music part of it sometimes. It just depends on what I'm doing. So. So by me looking for, I change the key shift. I turn, I, I, I positive the key shift by one, and then I go to the tempo. That's the same way. Now let's go back to seven so we can hear it. Now, what I always do is once I get to the end of that lyric, I'll find my the next part of the lyric that comes that goes into where it's supposed to go to at the last line of that lyric. Hey, was now, now, now we all know that everything starts on the one. I go to record. I be having it right there. Let's get dang do this here. Now, you always go to the end of the sample and take the cursor and drag it to the end so that way. When you ready to go to your next part of the lyric, you connect it. Now, I got to always make sure the beginning of the sample comes like the way it's supposed to so it meets with the song. So what we'll do is we'll go back to scene seven. And I'm going to let you hear it. And then y'all get a general idea of how this works when you're remixing the record and study having to go to the remix section of Serato Studio opposed to doing it on the original, the first screen. You see what I'm saying? So. <laughs> Okay, so now we go back to here so we can make sure it gets right. 
Now I got to find out where that's at so we can get that back right. So what I do is I come out there, I drag the sample back some more. Now, this should connect all the way like it really supposed to, like he's really singing this song on this beat. Now, now that you see how I really do this, when I finish the song, I will upload it so y'all can hear it in its totality. Right now, I was just about this being my very, very first uh, tutorial on making beats in Serato Studio. I hope everybody enjoyed what I just did and showed you how to make a nice, bangable house track. Once you get it complete, I will take you through the steps on my next video on how to mix and master. Every every record that you do, I'm going to show you how to mix and master your record in Serato Studio. And if you're ready to go, you can, MP, you can export the wave, bounce the MP3, bounce the wave. You can get it pressed on vinyl. You can digitally sell your own records or whatever it is and be one of the best remixes and all of that. Next thing, I'm gonna the next video, I'm going to show you a hip-hop video of my artist that I'm working on. my brother, One of my brother's songs, you know what I'm saying? And show you how I put that record together as well because we're working on our new album. You know, and then we celebrating real 50 years of real hip hop. So, by us being in our 50s and been doing music for over 40 years, this is like one of the best projects that we ever probably gonna do. I will, I don't know, but uh, you know, but I'm gonna show y'all how it's done over here at King Skull Records, man. So, shout out to my cameraman, Roy Rome, Mr. Thibodeau. Yeah, that's my dog. And we finna get dang sign out. Y'all check out the video. So don't forget to hit that, that like button, subscribe to the channel, and boom, let's get it.